What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel and today we're here with a new college football revamped rebuild and we are doing the UCF Knights. I posted a tweet telling you guys to let me know what school you wanted to see and of course there was no consensus, you wanted to see every school under the sun as well as team builder teams that I have no idea how I would be able to use them here on PC but if I do find a way I will absolutely do that. Uh, but one of the more interesting teams that I have seen suggested for a bit. And I, I kind of wanted to do them because right now, some of the schools have like big transfers. Like I was going to do Texas Tech. But Texas Tech's starting quarterback transferred to Michigan. And they got Oregon's former starting quarterback, Tyler Show to transfer to Texas Tech. And I was like, all right, that sounds fun. But trying to like manage the rosters to make those moves is very difficult, very tedious. Like if you thought Madden's offline player manager tool was brutal like trying to do anything when you have injuries and and trying to do trades and stuff it's really hard to manage it's even more harder right now here in the ncaa 14 mod so until they get an updated roster with transfers i'm gonna probably shy away from some of the schools that will at least have big impact playmakers that were transfers so uh, that's why I, you know ucf very very interesting school uh, also for this rebuild and if you guys want to see it, absolutely, it's not a time thing, it's not an effort thing. I just I, I just want to do a different approach. If you guys want to see the real recruits, because I have the first two years and I have done and used the first two years of real recruits here in my rebuilds, I will do that. But I've gone with generated ones just because when you use the real recruits, like 50% of the class, especially the four and five star players, are already co committed to schools. So from that standpoint, especially when I'm doing a rebuild of a smaller school, it's just that much more anticlimactic to try to recruit because there's just no chance. Like a lot of these guys are already locked in. So at least when we start with generated recruits, I have an opportunity to land a couple three stars, a couple four stars, and everything in between. But if you guys want to see me use and continue to use the realistic uh, recruiting classes, and it'll just be that much more difficult when I do the smaller schools, by all means, I I'm definitely welcome for that challenge. It's just for me, the, the easier that we can recruit, not even the easier, because it is easier, but it's just the more, I don't want to say fun is the right word, but you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not the best when you're just picking two and three star recruits, and that's not because of your program, that because like UCF, they're not bad at all. Three star trending towards a four star program, but when I use the realistic recruits, there's just not a lot of guys that are available that are uncommitted. So from that standpoint, I don't know, but for this rebuild, we will be using generated recruits. And here is our big board. No one that's, you know, too outrageous. I got a 76 Juco tight end that we're trailing South Florida on. I would like to close the gap. We got a 75 wide receiver, Gary Hodge, the number nine wide receiver in the country. 6'4", 200 pounds, four-star recruit. We're in his top five, so we're going to go a full 500 points there to try and gain some ground. We have a 73 middle linebacker, top 12, number 12 in all of high school. Uh, Kevin Brent, we're leading Iowa State there, so we're going to go balls to the wall and try and get him to commit. Uh, and a couple uh, other wide receivers there as well. Uh, but meeting the roster, what is going on with the Golden Knights? Are they still the Golden Knights, or are they just the Knights? Either way, uh, we're going to be Josh Hupel, who I believe was the OC for Oregon when he came over. we got Randy Shannon, who actually used to be the defensive coordinator for my Florida Gators. But looking at our roster, it's a talented roster, but it's a little bit top-heavy. You could see... That it's not like an established program because they don't have that big time depth. We have Dylan Gabriel at quarterback. Mackenzie Milton has transferred, but you know, as a redshirt senior, he's just going to sit behind there anyway. It doesn't really matter that he's still on the roster. Uh, but also pulling for him. Where'd he go? Utah? Or he, he transferred somewhere. Florida State? Was it? It was Florida State. Wishing him well because he was electrifying and he's coming back from a horrific injury. But Dylan Gabriel is the future for UCF 86 as a true sophomore. Very, very high expectations for how far he's going to lead this team in this rebuild. At running back, we have Otis Anderson and Greg McRae. Both buck 75. Very, very small running backs, but agile. And both possess a lot of speed. Uh, tight uh, Wide receiver, we got Marlon Williams. 95 overall beast. We got Jalen Robinson, who I actually I'm not really familiar with, but he had a really high rating in this roster. I'm going to trust it. The redshirt sophomore here. 97 speed, 99 acceleration. Uh, it, it's pretty filthy. We have Trey Nixon, who's been productive for his time there at UCF. So wide receiver, we have playmakers. At tight end, not so much. 74 and 76, respectively, on the offensive line. It's solid. We got a starting sophomore here, 79. He's going to be good. Cole Schneider, definitely draftable. 88 overall, 87 Matthew Lee. Redshirt freshman. 
Good God, he's going to be one of the best centers in all college football in a couple seasons. But generally speaking, a solid offensive line here in the AAC. Uh, defensively, we have Woodson, another redshirt sophomore, 79. Zayas, 82. Morris Brash, 82 at defensive end. Uh, D tackle inside, not great. You know, no household names or anything like that, but some solid players. Uh, we definitely are going to want to reorder that and get Kalia, Kalia Davis, 82. It's almost my girlfriend's name. That's creepy and weird all at the same time. Linebacking court, nothing to write home about. Eric Gilliard is the best of the group, 83 overall. Uh, into the second year, we have Tay Gowan, 87 overall. He's the guy that's most likely going to get drafted probably day late day two, early day three in the 2021 NFL Draft. We have Brandon Moore, great speed. You know, both these guys both have 90-plus speed, which is helpful for sure. Uh, we have at free safety, McMillan. Even though I'm, I'm going to move Aaron Robinson here just because we need to maximize we need to maximize our assets, even though Robinson is a strong safety because he's not going to be taken over for Richie Grant, who pound for pound might be the best player on this entire UCF roster. And he's a 93 overall a guy that right now, depending on where you're looking to get your draft news, He's probably going to be a second round pick, second, third round pick, somewhere in that range at an unreal senior bowl. So UCF is a good team. Looking at our schedule this year, I mean, we got Akron. That should be a win. Florida, the strength of the schedule is not super tough. Kind of like, you know, I, I could, when I could have an easy schedule year one in these rebuilds, especially when I'm not on a big program, I'm going to try to do that just so we can build up a little bit of job security and I don't have to worry about my coach getting fired. Uh, well, that Memphis game will be tricky. Every, it feels like every time UCF and Memphis plays, it's an absolute shootout. Uh, Louisville will be an interesting game. Uh, we had Houston, Temple, Rutgers. I mean, there's just no, you know, elite school. We're not play, we're not punching above our weight class. So these are all very reasonable games. That with Dylan Gabriel as our quarterback, I, I think this should absolutely, at minimum, be like an eight or nine win season. Anything less would be an absolute disappointment. And at the end of season one, ranked nine wins. So that's you know. We, we meet a requirement, no championship or anything like that. I don't even think there is one in the uh, Atlantic. I know this, and I see Louisville still here when I when I was checking in. I was like, that's the only one. I mean, that's that's another thing that's incredibly tedious every single time you load this up. It doesn't really, I don't think Louisville's going to make or break this rebuild for entertainment value. But ultimately, we came fourth in the American. A competitive Cincinnati SMU is there as well, as you can see, at least. Put some respect. We had an easy schedule, sure, but we also put up the most points and gave up the least points. Number one offense, number one defense in the conference. That's something that we could definitely build off of as we go forward with the Knights here. For our recruiting, got everyone we wanted pretty much. I think there's only one or two players ultimately that we haven't got. We're still, you know, waiting here for three guys. Obviously, look at the rating, 65s across the board. It's nothing prolific, but it's all about building blocks. So that, you know, year two, year three, we, you know, we land a higher rate of recruiting class. It's going to help the prestige of the school. And it's going to make recruiting that much better going forward. But we got 72 wide out here in Mooney, four-star. We got a four-star wide receiver in Curtis Stewart locked in. We have a, um, down here, it was only a two-star, but a Juco 76 overall tight end. Thomas Marcus, he's probably actually going to be our tight end one next season. We got uh, Britton here, who was a four-star, somehow regressed down to a three-star. But the number 12 middle linebacker in the class also got him to recruit. He is another player that should have a big, big-time opportunity to make some plays as a true freshman on our defense. So I'm happy with the recruiting for year one, but definitely we want to get you know some flashier players, more splash guys. Uh, looking at our squad, uh, from a statistical standpoint, let's see the numbers here. Dylan Gabriel... Had 2,500 yards, 23 touchdowns, to 13 interceptions. So maybe that's slightly underwhelming from where I expected he was going to be. But we still have two more years as a junior and you know, hopefully doesn't go to the NFL for him to be in that Heisman contention, Heisman conversation. Otis Anderson was exceptional though. Almost 1,300 rushing yards, 19 touchdowns. We had seven and six here for Greg McRae. So a very dangerous rushing attack that we had here. 54 catches, 844 and eight for Marlon Williams, five and six. For Jalen Robinson, and then on the defensive side, leading the tackle, Bethune, with 71 total tackles, 11 TFLs, 4 sacks, 18 TFLs, 6.5 sacks for Tremon Morris Brash. This guy's a stud for a sophomore. I love seeing that. Six interceptions, Richie Grant. Go on, sir. Go make yourself a first-round NFL pick. Gowan at corner with four. Jean-Baptiste, outside linebacker, 
also with four interceptions. So, God damn, man, this defense absolutely full of playmakers. Look at the Heisman, man. Otis Anderson probably should have been at least top five. You get 19 touchdowns, you crank. Oh, my. The stupid army thing. There's always an army player there. Ah, I think that's just disrespectful. 19 touchdowns, Otis Anderson. You don't even put him in the top five? Like, where's that rank against all college football? Like, is, did everyone just eat this year? And in his, his season wasn't anything special, potentially? That could be... Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. Look at that. 19 for the freshman Robinson. Remsburg. Goddamn Naval Academies, man. They're built differently. I'm still happy with the year. And uh, 25 ranked. I mean, we're going to have a nice bowl game. Uh, looks like the Iron Forces. I would love to take down one of these Naval Academies if we can get them in the bowl game. And during the offseason, Travis Etienne got himself the Heisman Trophy with 24 touchdowns, 15, 16, 17, 18, about 1,900 yards from scrimmage. Yeah, okay. Impressive year. Uh, Armed Forces Bowl. We're taking on, oddly enough, the team that I was trying to rebuild first in Texas Tech. 6-6? Six and six? How oh, they make a bowl game? This better be, this better be an absolute ass-kicking. And while not flashy, we were able to handle business. 21-17 over Texas Tech. As you can see here, we have a... Uh, Hescock touchdown in the third quarter. Greg McCray started thinking of something in the first, but the go-ahead in the fourth quarter. Otis Anderson, snub from a Heisman Finals. Even just getting that top five 16-yard touchdown run as UCF finishes the year 10-3 and, and 21st ranked. Players leaving, no underclassmen that we really have to worry about. Lofton is transferring as a 74 center uh, freshman. That actually kind of stings because I definitely could have kicked him in the guard. And got a more playing time. But it is what it is. Williams projected to go first round. Richie Grant projected to go second round. Gow in there. Six. McCray. Six. Nixon. Seventh. Otis Anderson. 19 total touchdowns. Doesn't even... Like, McCray's getting drafted over him. The, the utter disrespect. So on signing day here, it's, it's, it's good. It's a good day for UCF. We have the top recruiting class in the conference. 38th overall. In all of college football. And when you're looking at the programs that are punching above our weight class. You know. No one really is too shocking. To say the least. And it's definitely going to be a program going forward. Is going to be uh, only getting better. Right. We're start, like we're, I don't expect at any other point for the remainder of this rebuild. For us to be lower than 38th. Um, lost out on a couple guys here on the final day. We did get Corey Page to the guard 65. But nothing flashy. And the rest of the guys you've already met. I'm excited to get these players in. And see what they could do as two freshmen. Season 2 UCF. We got a bye, which is fine. Not overly worried about it. But this is going to be a big year. I think this is going to be the year where we like... We got the baseline for the program. We finished twenty in the 20s. Ranked somewhere there. Nine wins. Didn't win the conference. Won our bowl game. So there is something we could build on. Uh, looking at our returning players and how they develop. Dylan Gabriel is now a 90 overall plus quarterback. He's 91. It's right there. You saw it. Uh, ben Tavius Thompson has massive shoes to fill at running back as our top two running backs have uh, graduated. He's an 84. It's not bad. It's a drop-off, but not significant drop-off. At wide receiver, Jalen Robinson, the redshirt junior, is going to have to be an absolute beast as our wide receiver room beyond him is a little bit thin. Tight ends, nothing special. On the offensive line, we have Schneider, who's a 92. Lee, who's a 93. Uh, 85 guard there, the interior is really good. Generally, the offensive line is still very strong and a strength of the team. Morris Brash, who was probably our most impactful and statistically dominant defender, will get the start at defensive end. He's an 85. Zayas, 87. In the interior, uh, Kalaya Davis, uh, 88, which is really good. The rest of the D. I mean, our D line is also very stout. Linebacker court, not so much. Uh, Gilliard is the best of the bunch. He's an 88 returning. He was productive last season. Bethune, also our leading tackler from a year ago. He's an 84 on the outside. Secondary, you know, not brutal. The first three guys, the guys that are primarily going to play all in the 80s, which is fine with me. Free safety of a 77. Strong safety, 77. Uh, going with a little bit of youth. Trying to fill the six interceptions that last year's starting strong safety, Richie Grant, was able to produce for us. Special teams, you know, guys in the high 70s, low 80s. Uh, it is what it is. Hey, kick the ball well. That's all I'm asking you to do. As we gear up for the 2021 season with very, very high aspirations of, at worst, equaling what we did a year ago. So to start this season, the American Outright Winners, Central Florida. 
So that makes sense why we won the division. Undefeated, 12-0. Hopefully a team slips up. I mean, that's just what happens. You go undefeated, you're in a lesser conference. You're never, you know, it's going to be difficult to get into that top two. Look at the top 25, though. Hopefully the two teams ahead of us play national title. Okay, so that's what? App State? So we're going to... We're going to need Miami to lose to Boston College. I don't think there's going to be any way we climb and can jump App State. But App State? What a national championship game that would be potentially. If Boston College could beat Miami, App State versus Central Florida. I'd be here for it. I'd be ready for it. Uh, let's see what happened for us, though. How do we get here? Let's look at our schedule. Let's see here. UCF schedule. How do I check that? Can I look at this? There we go. So we beat FCS, Navy, Georgia State, Cincinnati. That's that's a tough team. They're a legit team, 17 to 14. Temple's near. SMU kicked the shit out of them. Memphis is usually a strong team. They're 8 and 4 at this point. We beat them 49 to 3. Houston's not a pushover. Uh, South Florida's not a pushover. And then we beat Louisville, 19th ranked Louisville, in overtime to give us that little push into that top five in the rankings. But again, man, everything's got to definitely fall on Boston College, keeping our season alive. Look at our season stats. Dylan Gabriel, not a bad year. Again, still not really, you know, playing like a 91 overall quarterback in NCAA. 30 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. That's a little ridiculous. We have 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns from Bentavious Thompson. 5-4 and four for Johnny Richardson, the freshman. Uh, 1,400 yards, 20 touchdowns for Jalen Robinson. Unreal. Like, that guy might be in Heisman contention, for all I know. Defensively, 72 tackles by Bethune. So that's back-to-back -back years he's led this team in tackles. 17 TFLs, 4.5 sacks for Davis. 15 and 4.5 for Zayas. Four picks from Derek Gaines leading the team. So from there, let's take a peek at the old Heisman watch. If there's any players from Central Florida there. We have Jack Charbonnet from Michigan. Well, actually, I think he transferred. You have your token... Naval Academy player, Cameron Harris, Rashad White, David Bailey. Boston College, David Bailey, please go off on Miami. Please keep our season alive. All right, I'll let this sim hang up here at this screen. As soon as I hit A, we're going to figure out if we're going to a national championship or if Boston College screwed the pooch and we're stuck at the uh, second place game pretty much. So let's see here. Heisman went to Cameron Harris from Miami. Hopefully that's the only positive that's happening for Miami. Ah. God damn it. West Virginia. Capital One Orange Bowl. Jalen Robinson, Blitnikoff. Oh, actually, I'll take that. You know, small school player winning best wide receiver. But that's, ah, that's frustrating. Because you always wonder, like... I don't want to say... you know, it's what, okay, Actually, here's what I want to see. Who did App State play? Because we're probably both in like the same, you know, bubble of, of not super difficult. Like, let's see. They got Kansas, Coastal Carolina, Texas A&M. They beat a ranked Army. But they only had like one ranked victory as well. I mean, yeah, Utah, Virginia Tech. Tech, yes. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to die on this hill. They definitely played slightly better teams than what we played. And at least we saw that it's, it's possible. We came third place. Not from a big, you know, big Power 5 conference. App State is in a national championship game. Only year two of this rebuild. And they're they're coming from, I don't even know what conference they're in off the top of my head. So at least that's that's boding well for the future of our small... Anytime you do a small school, especially here today with UCF, that, you know, we, we we're going to have at least one more big year next year with Dylan Gabriel at the helm. Hopefully he doesn't go to, go to the next level. That's still, you know, when you're clearly in the second place game, it's not where you want to be. And here, two back-to-back -back bowl victories. The Orange Bowl. Like, I I would hesitate to guess. That's probably the most uh, prestigious accomplishment Central Florida's ever had as a school. We got that year two. 35-13. We handle our business. I don't know why it says we stunned West Virginia there. We're clearly the better team. Two touchdowns, no picks for Dylan Gabriel. Our star player, though, was Ben Tavius Thompson. 153 yards, two rushing touchdowns. On the game. Also at 74. Oh my god. What a beast. This guy was a beast. He had almost two, he had over 200 yards from scrimmage and three touchdowns. Ben Tavius Thompson. Let's go. 
Shout out Jalen Robinson, new record holder, breaking Gabriel Davis, who's doing good things with the Buffalo Bills right now. We broke his single season receiving yard record by a lot, by like 300 total yards. Also beat Brett Cooper from 1992. What a year, the year I was born. It stood that long, 27-ish years. What a year for Robinson. Players are leaving. No underclassmen we had to worry about. Losing two players to the draft. Davis projected to go seventh round as well as Cole Schneider. We have Page, the center, transferring. So let's back to back years. Our backup centers just decided to leave. Don't know if we could convince them to stay. No. I mean, our O-line depth's not that great that we can just be letting freshmen that are in the 70s just walk out the door. But it is what it is, man. Let's... Uh, Let's go. I think Parker Bo. I got guys going to like the WWE or something like that. So, hey, best of luck. So far, our recruiting class actually did worse. I thought we did better. Apparently, we did like the eight. The, the CPU auto signed nine guys down here that we're just going to most likely cut. But I thought like because we had four four stars and some high three stars. Like this is a better recruiting class than what we had a year ago. I needed a center. I missed out on one there. I'll just kick a guard in. But we got like a 74 star. We got a 68 three. A 71, 3, a 69. Like, these are high threes because three stars can be anywhere between, I don't even know what, like 59 overall and 72, 73, somewhere in that range. We got a four star athlete here, number 29, Vaughn Williams. Four star wide receiver, big, gigantic human being, 6'6, 230. 73, number three free safety in the class. And we got a, a solid punter as well. So I, I guess going quality over quantity did not work well in our mathematical favor for how our recruiting class goes. But in terms of players, this was better than last year. So to kick off year three, week three, we had two first week buys for some reason. I wasn't tinkering with my schedule. So we get extra rest and we start at number 13 ranked. Looking at our squad, big year. I'm not going to say this is going to be our final year to be competitive. But I, I don't know and I can't say for sure if at any other point we're going to have a 96 or around their quarterback like we do with Dylan Gabriel. Uh, running back here, good. I mean, we lost uh, you know our stud running back from a year ago, but 87-86 That's a good one-two punch. Nice little tandem there. Jalen Robinson, probably the greatest wide receiver in Central Florida history, is here as a redshirt senior. Him and Dylan Gabriel are going to have to carry this team on the offensive side of the ball. That's not shots. Fido O'Keefe here, really solid slot wide receiver. Um, the rest of the wide receiver room isn't bad. 80 overall tight end. O-line is solid. We don't have a lot of depth. Thank God injuries aren't on. 87, 84, 99 for the center there. Matthew Lee, first team All-American. Very, very hyped up. Like Jason Kelsey level. 90 right guard there and a 83 right tackle. So generally O-line still very strong. Defensively, Morris Brash, the senior's a 90. Woodson's a 90. The other senior, we have an 88 starting D tackle and Cam Good. Also a senior linebacker court, not amazing outside of Bethune, but Tatum Bethune looking for his third straight year being our leading tackler in the secondary. Double up on the 90 corners, Wilson and Corey Thornton. Uh, Wilson the senior, Thornton the junior. Uh, free safety, Gaines, who led the team in interceptions last year, got uh, All-American as well, preseason All-American. He's an 83, McMillan is an 82, special teamers both in the 80s as well. Haven't had to worry about that unit this entire rebuild. So, let's see, man. Let's see what Dylan Gabriel can do. Can we run the gauntlet? Can we go undefeated? Look at our schedule. We got Tulane, winnable. Ohio, winnable. Tulsa, winnable. Charlotte, winnable. SMU, winnable. Memphis, winnable. Like It's looking like, all right, Louisville's always our big game every year. They're ranked currently. But, I mean, for the most part, it's the same schedule as we had a year ago. And at least this time, we're not starting, what were we, like in the 20s? So maybe starting at 13, if we can run the gauntlet yet again, we could follow in the same shoes that App State did and find a way to be an undefeated, non-Power 5 championship game opponent. So what we got here is another American championship, which is good. I'm proud of it. We were number two going into it. And look at that, man. Barring, I mean... There is still a chance that we get bumped somehow, some way. Let's look at the teams that are around us. You see, look, this is where my worry's at. If Iowa beats Michigan, or like the winner of Iowa-Michigan could absolutely bump us out of, first, uh, out of the championship game. And that would be an absolute all-time robbery. But then also, like, would it? You know, if this happened in real life, and you had Oregon there, and obviously Oregon has to handle business against USC in the Pac-12 championship. But if, like, you have UCF sitting here, they just outright won their division. They're just sitting there. Probably an argument somewhat valid could be made 
And really, you know, looking at this, you have Iowa for the Big Ten, and then you have also Arkansas potentially. If they can beat number nine Georgia, they're going to win the SEC. And you know what? As much as I would like to think that, you know, we have punched our ticket, we have done the job, we're undefeated 12 0, that we should be in the national championship game, there's going to be like, I'm not going to be too upset. I will, I'll be upset, but I'm not going to be like shocked if the Big Ten champion or if Arkansas can win the SEC can bump us out of that number two spot. It's just, it's just where we are at as a division. Unless, you know, and if that happens, maybe we'll, we'll maybe get a little bit out there and, and think about maybe switching conferences for Central Florida. Maybe we can go to the ACC uh, and have that step. I don't, I don't know. Um, but let's just, let's just see here. Let's go. Let's, I mean, we don't need to look at stats or anything like that. Let's figure out what we're doing for our bowl game and then we'll figure that out. All right, moment of truth this is when all the stuff starts going. So, uh, Josh Hupel is up to level 36. Larry McCammon? Larry McCammon the third from Florida Atlantic is your... I mean, hey, that's a hell of a year. Haven't seen numbers like that since Devin Singletary was doing the damn thing. We've won the Outland. Lee, our center, has won the Outland. Very happy for him. I actually will take that award. He's also won the Remington as a 99 overall. And we, I guess, we have stayed. The game has not screwed us. UCF in year three has a legitimate shot at actually being a national champion and not just the memes of the uncrowned national champion. Look at that. Iowa lot. What? Iowa beat Michigan. Arkansas. Look, literally the worst case scenario still happened and we stayed at two. Oregon handled business, but Iowa won the Big Ten. Arkansas did the damn thing in the SEC championship. And yet they kept us right here at number two. I'm very, very thankful for that. I mean, we started as a three-star program. We're already up to a five. This might be like our, our, the pinnacle for this rebuild, given that it's going to be the last year that we have Dylan Gabriel. But before we go into this national championship game, let's kind of just see what's going on here. First, we have one head coaching point that I could spend. I'm going to continue to keep feeding it here uh, into recruiting. Actually, I still have like four guys that have yet to commit. So I'm going to actually, usually you always want to go for the Saban factor here where you get a guy to instant commit. But I think we're going to have to have a fairly important uh, off-season bidding to try to get the last four guys across the line. So it's going to be more important to go with that three out of three letter of intent skill tree. And the more I just tinker around with these skill trees, the more and more I hope that's going to be a Madden 22 with all these new coaching staffs and stuff like that that we can fairly certainly assume is going to happen. Uh, I think it'd be very unfortunate they don't have uh, an actual skill tree. Um, so, uh, skewing the fact that my uh, backup running back has a 600 QB rating. Uh, we're going to look at Dylan Gabriel here. 2,700 yards, 28 touchdowns to six picks. Again, I mean, he's never really had a prolific season for us, unfortunately. 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns for Demarius Good. Richardson was not too shabby as well. We had 1,100 yards, 14 touchdowns for Jalen Robinson, who I'd be shocked if he doesn't have all of the major Central Florida receiving records come the end of this year. Bethune, for the third straight season, has led our team in total tackles. we got 10.5 sacks, 25 TFLs for Landon Woodson. What hell of a year. 17 TFLs, 7.5 sacks for Jean-Baptiste. Uh, nice year there for Morris Brash. Five picks, Devad Wilson. Four for Hodges. So, I mean, our defense got the job done. Our offense got the job done. Offense wasn't prolific, but that's still fine. Because we're going to hop in and play this one. There's no way in hell we're sitting on the sidelines and straight up. Simmon, probably our only shot at winning a national championship. So without further ado, getting the preview here. Oregon A+. Plus, they literally have us beat in every category outside of pass defense. Which even then, they still have a top 10 pass defense. Corso is taking us. Okay. I mean, who have they played? We know who we've played, right? We Again, it's, it's, it's our schedule. We played our schedule... Except the difference this year is that we started at a higher ranking or lower ranking, whatever way you want to look at it. But uh, at this point, I think Louisville uh, at 8-4 was ranked. I also think uh, that was it, though. So it's pretty been two year, pretty much been two years of Louisville being our only ranked opponent that we played. But we handle business, man. What has what Oregon done? Let's see here. Okay. Not seeing anything. Okay, they beat UCLA. They beat ranked one. They only have three ranked wins. I mean, it's not like they're an absolute juggernaut. They, there's some cupcake games on there for sure. Like the Arizona, 59. But there's no other way to cut it. We are going to be severe underdogs, even though Corso is taking us. But I think Dylan Gabriel's going to have a little bit of magic. And we're going to have a chance to shock the world. You know I me. Mean? We won the coin toss. We are going to kick it. So we can have the ball to start the second half. 
Let's just let the defense do its thing. Our defense is very good. We have, like, top three defense in all of the country. And, hey, they hold to a field goal attempt. Now it's our time to do the business on the offensive side of the ball. Shit. Big time sack. Back to going backwards. On, you know what? If Oregon, even though Oregon's very good, I, I think when we when we start to look at schools that aren't going to be cupcakey. I mean, UCF was actually you know not that much of a challenge, even though they were only a three star program. But like in terms of like if it's time to do a big program, I honestly think Oregon's going to be very interesting to do because they don't. Oh, that's a big play. It's a great play by the tight end there, Marcus. Oregon hasn't have they ever won a national championship? Like Oregon's always been that like almost so close. Especially going back with like Mariota and Chip Kelly. That could be an interesting team to try to get their first national championship with. But right now, they're the enemy. Second to four and over the second quarter. Oh, my God. It's so hard to run the ball anytime. Like, you know, you're... I, it's, hey, you know what? You want John Madden analysis? Anytime your offensive line is significantly worse than the other team's defensive line, it's not going to be fun and you're not going to be very efficient running the ball. Kind of what the case is here today. Third and three. Robinson is our prolific wide receiver at the top of the screen there. Or let's just go for the give me first down. Cross the middle of the field. Too good to pass up. Amari Johnson, nine yards. First and goal, Central Florida. Okay, now here we're going to manufacture a touch here. Get the ball in Robinson's hands. See if we can get blocking there from the wide receiver. Oh, look at that. Too easy. Jalen Robinson, seven-yard touchdown run, untouched as UCF takes the lead very early in the second quarter. See what the defense can do. Now they're out there. Oh, my God. They're just, hey, we hold them to another field goal. Ben, but didn't break. And that, what, what I like that's good there is that Oregon's not explosive, man. They're getting, like, five six yards rushing and like that's what they're doing they're relying on the run game that's not gonna be good man they're taking time off the clock we can score quickly we can keep that offense off the field keep holding them to field goals it's gonna bode well as we got a minute 24 left in the first half to try to extend our lead go oh, 13 yards good start jalen robinson who regardless of team might be the best offensive player on the field today oh Oh, the scramble drill works. What a play by Dylan Gabriel to keep the... I thought that was a pick. As soon as that ball left my hands, I was like, oh, come on, C4. You peter mend it. But look at that confusion. That I mean, hey, that DB had to pick. He had to pick. He went with the guy that was going to the sideline. Let's burn a time out here. There we go. First down. Dylan Gabriel, nine yards. Now, Dylan Gable's not really a dual threat, but he's a good athlete. Like, he's not Mackenzie Milton. Let's see if we can... Oh! Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, bird timeout. Second and goal. Let's see if Robinson there. Best play at the top of the screen. Hey! Oh! Oh, and he catches it to Mary Johnson! That is great contact balance. It's great strength of hands. Is that... I thought for sure that was going to be a pass breakup. Especially when, you know, guaranteed, like, look at that right there. Usually that's a drop. That's one of those, like, crappy, shitty drops. But he was focused. He was determined. And this is looking good, man. 36 seconds to go to halftime. Barring something ridiculous happening, we should be able to go into halftime with a lead. Which we do. And we get the ball to start the second half. Let's chew. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm going to cheese. I'm turning the chew the clock on. Third and two. Go QB. Just go QB. Third and two slide. Very nice. Again, just bang. Bail on the play. Get some easy yardage. They're going all in just to cover the wide receivers, cover the middle of the field. They're not spying Dylan Gabriel. I mean, he got like 83, 84 speed. We can make plays like this all day long. Let's go, man. Hey, 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 stop me two, three times. Oh, they're going to let us score. That looked like they're letting us score, so we couldn't chew up any more clock because we chewed up the entire third quarter. Finish with a touchdown, 20-6. to six. UCF is up. Defense, I think it'll stop you. This game's over. Look at that, man. That's sim this one out. Oof. Okay, that was quick. This looks good, though. Our D Unreal D. There we go. Unreal defense from Central Florida. Six points. 
Couple turn, two back-to-back -back turnovers to close this one out. I love that. Like, you think, you know, UCF, all right, if you know anything about college football, you're like, all right, Dylan Gabriel, UCF's known for their offense, get a couple good defensive players, let alone year three, taking the number one, clearly the best team in all of college football in Oregon, where we are severe underdogs. They're like A-plus offense, A-plus defense, and we don't give up a touchdown. We force multiple turnovers when they are going all in in the fourth quarter. That is, that is easily, easily the most impressive Defensive performance I've seen in NCAA 14 sim. Our player of the game, made, you know, full credit to Oregon. Our player of the game had two touchdowns, but he only had like 60 yards total. But there you have it. Not a meme no more. UCF are officially college football world champions. Knocking off Oregon here. Uh, wow. 28 to 6. Now we got two years left. Gonna be you know, a little bit. It's gonna be very tough to get back here next year because we have the massive, significant drop off. Dylan Gabriel's gonna be graduating, but uh, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for that grind. Two more years to try to get back to the national champion, but at least we got the one. As we high acid into the off season as national champions, uh, Jalen Robinson again. I, I said greatest wide receiver in history, uh, breaking. Very old record, David Rhodes, most receiving touchdowns in a career by a lot. He's sitting there at 41, tops of it, the greatest player, I think, pound for pound in UCF history. Look at our players that are leaving. Uh, Wilson's the only guy projected to get drafted. I think that's incredibly disrespectful to Jalen Robinson. I mean, 5'9", 166, niche size, but that's a guy that's going to like gonna do a lot of good things. Dylan Gabriel, who a lot of people think for 2022 in real life, like next year's, College draft could potentially be in the conversation for like a late first rounder, early second rounder type guy. Like a lot of our good players, productive players from a national championship team, getting disrespected by the next level. That's brutal, man. Oh, we just won the national championship. These were four players. Some of them that we were first. We needed to de-tackle. We were all or nothing on Roth. All these guys had at least 3,000 points of offseason, and we only got the tight end. I don't know what a recruiting class is. Again, kind of took the approach of quality over quantity. 52nd. Four four stars, six three stars. I mean, there there goes, you know, there was four more four stars. So we just, like, that's unbelievable. We were first place for Roth, lost out on him. Second place for Booker by 1,000, and we only gained 600 points ground. We were first place for Walker by 1,000, and lost out to, I mean, fuck off. So, I, I mean, you're a wide receiver. He was a wide receiver anyways. So, I mean, we don't need wideouts. Roth is the one that stings the most because we need a D-tackle for our requirements. So we did get the tight end here. So, uh, I think he was a gem. Can't see it anyways. But, yeah, it's still good. Look, look at the players. Good stuff. 74, 75 overall. Like a really talented class. We just didn't have the depth, again, to get much of a great overall ranking because we went quality over quantity. So we open up year four as defending national champions with the disrespectful ranking of 15th. I feel like that's, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, there are, there, you know, there's obvious roster turnover, but I don't know if you should just automatically punish a team like that. Parker Navarro could be good. He's 90 overall. I, I'm ready to rock and roll with Navarro. We got a uh, good one-two punch at running back, 92 and 91 for Gooden Richardson. At wide receiver, Amari Johnson, massive shoes to fill, but he was solid. He was productive, especially in that national championship game. We have Menard, who's an 86. 82. It's not a prolific elite skill position group, but it's pretty damn good. O-line is a big worry. We're going with the freshman left tackle, 74. Junior, 75. 99 Matt Lee won everything you can win as a center. Returned as a senior to try to run it back. Um, luckily, we have that experience anchoring the O-line, but generally, um, you know, it, it went from being a strength to a concern this season. Defensively, I don't think it's going to be that bad. 87 and 85 DNs, 85 and 84 D tackles. Linebacking core, we have Cuppet, who's an 82. Burns, 84, and Mosier, who's at 82. Uh, secondary's very good, though. We have Francois, who's a 94. Thornton, who's a 94. 92 there for Justin Hodges. Really, really good. Probably one of the best secondaries, at least from a corner standpoint, in all of college football. Bullard's an 83. And we have Patrick Black, 78, as our safeties. Both of our special teamers in the 80s as well. Punter Eric White is a preseason All-American. So I'm expecting, again, like you look at our schedule, we probably run the table again. Uh, just keep. I'm not. I'm not going to be changing it up too much. We do have Colorado. That could be interesting. Louisville, as always. There's nothing too crazy, man. We should, you know, 
Maybe it's maybe it's staying too much in our comfort zone. Whatever you want to call it, we won the national championship with this schedule. I'm not going to change up what the game's giving me. You only can play who you play. So let's keep on keeping on here and see if we can go another season undefeated and make it three in a row. And there was going to be a drop-off here in year four. He finished 16th ranked, 9-3. and three. Didn't win the, the division, the conference. What do we got here? Who beat us? Louisville? Of course, Louisville. Temple was good this year as well, too. As you can see, we still have the number one scoring offense, 465 points. Defensively, second, just behind Louisville. That's still a little bit disappointing, though, I'll be honest with you. Even though we have it now, we've done one of our biggest main tasks when we started with UCF. We made them into a six-star program, one of the most prolific colleges in all of football. Um, yeah, might as well just look at our stats here, man. This is going to be kind of a, a bummer of a year. Uh, Navarro, though, wow, in one year puts up better numbers than what Dylan Gabriel did. At any of the years prior, 34 touchdowns, 9 picks. We might actually have something to be really competitive in the fifth and final year of this rebuild. Running the ball, we've always had stellar run back play. Uh, run back play, yeah, that makes sense. Running back play, Demarius Good, 1,300 yards, 11 tutties. We have 990 and 11 for Amari Johnson. Happy to see that. Defensively, Mojir led the team with 84 tackles, 19 TFL, 7 sacks. God damn. Interceptions down a little bit from over the last couple seasons. Uh, for the Heisman, I don't think we're probably going to have anybody on that list. No one was too prolific on the offense. Kyron Williams, therefore, Notre Dame. Sanders, and Tank Bigsby. Okay, whatever, man. A little bit of a down year. Hopefully, we can end this one with a bowl game victory and then set ourselves up for another year in five that we could potentially win another national championship. All right, our bowl game is going to be the military bowl. The Knights against the Knights. And we make it four straight years that we've won our bowl game. Yeah, the, the trophy case is filling up here at Central Florida. Obviously, everything kind of pales in comparison to the Natty, but I will take it. Armed Forces Bowl in a game that, hey, we, we did our job, man. We went out there. We did our job. Navarro, who I'm very excited to see. I mean, I mean there is a chance, I guess, he tries to declare what he will be able to do as a senior. 300 yards, three touchdowns, player of the game for us as we knock off Army and go in with some momentum into our fifth and final offseason. And look at our players leaving. Navarro stays at quarterback. We are obviously going to be losing a lot of talented seniors that have been doing some good things for us. Mary Johnson, good. We do have corner Justin Hodges. Wants to leave early. That's, I mean, that's guaranteed the conference championship. Get him back. Obviously, we can't be letting just 90-plus overall players go. Even though we're good, we're still we're not like Alabama where we just have you know depth charts upon depth chart of guys that are going to be all-stars so we got him to return which is big we're losing lee matthew lee the 99 overall center thornton in the secondary but ultimately I, I still think we're gonna have more than enough talent on this roster to be very competitive in the final year and our last recruiting class best of the bunch we finished top 20 at 18 seven four star recruits 10 three star 17 total and you know at least we got you know out of the 50s we got a couple studs man there's no there's no other way around we got some studs studs dude we got the number 15 wide receiver cody brown we got this guy mike dixon four star all right fine 81 overall corner todd davis he has 78 corner 76 d tackle set we got a fullback for god's sakes what a recruiting class all right final year man we open up at 23 in the big board gonna be difficult to make that jump to go up 21 spots minimum, but I, I like the talent that we have here. We have Parker Navarro, first team All-American, 98 overall. So that's even higher. Dylan Gabriel, highest he went was 96. Registered 94 running back. Wide receiver talent has dipped off just a little bit. Uh, Mooney's the best of the bunch at 85, so I'm a little concerned there. But hopefully the good quarterback play can kind of compensate for that. Forrest, 87, that's the highest rated tight end we've had. O-line, you know, not great. Uh, Rubel at right tackle is the best of the bunch. It's, it's not a great O-line, though. I can't. There's no other way, you know. Can't shine up a turd any and still be a turd. That's kind of what our O-line is. Uh, Seliscar at DN, 93. He's an All-American. Bryant, 90 at D-tackle. Like, our defense is legit this year. And I, I'm not saying that it wasn't legit any other year. Obviously, that Oregon National Championship game, our defense was unreal. But from a Sim standpoint, I mean, look at that. Secondary, 95, 94, 94 at corner, 89 at free safety. It's going to be, uh, I, I absolutely think that this team will go undefeated. It's just where will we finish in the polls? I think that's going to be the biggest hurdle. And we gave it we gave it our all, man, in year five. Ten and two. Two lot. I mean, I don't know where. <sighs> Damn it. Where are those losses at? We'll see that at the end of this week. We got a bowl game. 
Let's get right to the bowl game. It's going to be the Fiesta Bowl. But ultimately, you know, two losses. 98 overall quarterback. Like, that's the thing. You know, obviously I play a lot more Madden. And there's certain things that you can never, you know, prepare for, predict, or project in a Madden. So we also understand that like, there's certain things in a Madden soon that, like, you know, if you have... Uh, you, usually, if you have a good team but not a great team, you're going to do well in the Madden Sim, for example. Like, if you have a 95 overall team, I guarantee an 88 overall team will be better in the Madden Sim. And one thing that you've picked up in an NCAA Sim is, like, it's almost all tied to your quarterback. If you have, like, a 95-plus overall quarterback, you're probably going to win a lot of games. And given our schedule, two losses is definitely disappointing here. Let's see who the losses were to. We lost to Louisville. We, got, we lost Bad to Louisville. We lost to ranked Charlotte, 42-35. It's a little bit annoying. Not what you want to see at all. Uh, statistically speaking, let's see. Navarro, we had 31 touchdowns, almost 3,000 yards, four picks. I mean, he was, he's was he been very good. Parker Navarro, 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns for Richardson. No 1,000-yard receivers, but that was kind of always going to be the case given it was our, one of our weakest units on this entire team. Defensively. Cuppet, 84 tackles. We have six and a half sacks from Josh Selesar. Six picks. Quadric Bullard, the senior at free safety. Happy seeing that. But unfortunately, you know, we had our natty. We peaked year three. Well, let's just see if we can make it five straight years with a bowl game victory and wrap this one up. That's a little anticlimactic as we fall 30 to 19 to Washington. I mean, they're a, they're a, they're a big time. You know, big time Pac-12 school, a little bit overmatched here, unfortunately. Uh, no one really had a stellar game. We had two touchdowns by Washington. That's, I mean, unfortunately, we're going to end. I mean, I want to say unfortunately because just remember, we were UCF and we actually won a national championship. So let's just forget the last two years ever happened. Think about the peak. We had Dylan Gabriel at quarterback and our defense had one of the best NCAA 14 college football ramp sim performances I've ever seen. With the Golden Knights, we finished ranked. We made them into a six-star program. I think we ticked every box. We accomplished everything we wanted to do with Central Florida. And that is how I'm going to think and remember this rebuild as we close this one out. So with that being said, fellas, I'm always going to be chipping in with college football revamped NCAA 14 rebuilds. What school do you want to see next? I got lots of suggestions on Twitter, but I do want to give you guys an opportunity here on the YouTubes to see if one school... Takes a lot of momentum. It's what people overwhelmingly want me to see. I will say, though, try to restrict the team builder teams because as of right now, because I use a PlayStation 3 emulator, there, I, I just don't think there's a way right now to use team builder teams or anything like that. So try to keep it within the scope of like the 130 or whatever schools that are available here in NCAA 14. I will do the most requested team next. But thank you guys for watching. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace.